Hello and welcome! In this video we will go to Duna with this uh, plane lander and we will deliver a rover to Duna with a very cool um, hinge system and uh, arms and aerodynamic trickeries and everything is involved in this mission guys. This mission is amazing, it will be amazing. But first of all the function of this lander, how will it function basically? So you can see <coughs> I'm building it as a sort of a lifting body and uh, the way it, is, it works is it flies. Um, to the ground of Duna, it breaks in the atmosphere using wings and it can also precision guide itself using the wings to the um, spot you want to land on and then it deploys parachutes, falls in its wings to shift forward the center of um, uh, lift and then do a flip, deploy parachutes, land vertically uh, because it's horribly difficult to land planes on Duna I found out. I have a whole video on this topic, check it out on the top right, it's a pretty underrated video I think, but um, I think you will like it if you like this one too. And you may also have noticed that this here isn't KSP2, this here is KSP1 and I'm playing KSP1 because of a specific reason. I made a community post a bunch of weeks ago where I asked you what do you want to see. Um, the options were KSP2 only, KSP1 only or both in a mix. And a majority of you, 59%, uh, voted for both in a mix and this here will be the mix. And you can see how uh, complicated we have to build the wings in uh, comparison to KSP2, but we don't have hinges in KSP2, so uh, this mission wouldn't have been possible uh, in KSP2 actually, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, this design is kind of over-engineered, but I like over-engineering stuff. In real life you always have to look at costs and everything, it doesn't make sense, blah blah blah. In KSP1 I don't have to, in KSP1 I can build whatever I want and my rule of thumb in KSP1 is, and 2, uh, just make it look cool and function in a way that looks cool and then the craft is a good craft in my opinion. Uh, also this design is kind of based on the reusable Minmus lander, it, you can see a video on it on the top right in the info card, it's a pretty cool video. Somebody actually tried to land it on Duna, the RML, but sadly the wings uh, di didn't produce enough lift. So that's why I'm designing this system with parachutes and like this system is purposely designed for Duna. But yeah, what we also need for Duna is uh, to find a transfer window and I did this in a very, very professional way. You can see it on the screen. I just folded up uh, paper I didn't need and <laughs> it had a 45 degree angle, guys. But yeah, with that the build is almost complete. We have our transfer window. Let's get to the launch. And with that we have lift off, we have cleared the non-existing tower and now we are accelerating towards the sky, towards booster separation. Um, this rocket is a way too high TWR, but it looked cool and it felt cool and you gotta go fast. But here Pirelli have crossed, beautiful isn't it, always cool. Uh, I just attached those boosters to make the shot honestly, didn't really need to be that way. but. Uh, it, it goes into the over-engineering uh, department, which I like in case V1 and 2. So yeah, here we are um, in space, almost, um, and almost in orbit. And then uh, we can deploy the fairing and get on our way to Duna. Here we are in orbit. We can see Kerbin underneath. Isn't it beautiful, honestly? And then let's go to Duna. Here you can see the burn towards Duna. We are closely but surely getting our epilepsis up. To Duna and getting an encounter with it. Now I like visiting Duna um, a lot. Also I like visiting Ike. Basically I like both. But uh, here we are flying away from Kirby to our first correctional maneuver of this video. But first of all we have to stage away the bottom tank because it's not re really needed anymore. It has fulfilled its purpose and it's almost out of fuel. So let's stage it away and continue with the nuclear engine which has a suspiciously low amount of fuel, guys. I don't know if you can see it. You will see what we do out of it. Um, first of all, this was all by accident, I, I mean all planned. 
um, that this nuclear stage will run out of fuel. Uh, I, I planned this five years ago, um, actually before I even knew KSP existed. But yeah, here we are, Dura. Um, we are decelerating here and you can see a beautiful canyon at the bottom. And you can also see the beautiful surface uh, of Parallax 2.0. I have to say, um, with Parallax 2.0, the surfaces uh, of KSP1 still look better than in KSP2. But then staging away the nuclear stage, which ran out of fuel quite, uh, kind of. We don't have enough uh, fuel in it to return. Uh, but how do we return them? We just use the lander, because I mean, it has 2,500 uh, meters a second. It has wings, it has landing gear. We wanted to land it at the KC anyway. Let's get, uh, let, let's use the lander. Here you can see the flip maneuver. We, we clapped in our wings to shift forward the center of um, lift. And here we are landing a perfect buttery smooth landing that couldn't have gone any better. And remember, I didn't have a quick save, only from Duna Orbit. So let's hope this will go well. And miraculously, I really don't know why, but miraculously it has worked. So let's deploy the rover. So first there's the heating cover, which functions as a ramp. And secondly, the actual cargo bay door, which in real life would be like an insulating layer. And then the hinge arm uh, and the rover uh, legs, legs. <laughs> the rover wheels that uh, extend out. So we can get our Kerbal in, but first we need to plant a flag, of course. And guys, the Swiss flag returns. Uh, uh, you also wrote me uh, that uh, in case B2 there's a, a method to get in the flags. Uh, I will try it out, maybe uh, it will work, but uh, I haven't quite looked at it properly. I mean, at some point they will add the feature anyway, so maybe I'll just wait um, with that. But I'm thankful that you wrote it to me. I'm really glad if you write tips for me in the comments like how I could improve my craft, how I could improve my game. I really like that. But yes, yeah, second flag planted. Uh, I, I think I gave this hill a name, I, I don't know. Um, like uh, two years ago when I started playing KSP, I had this vision that I would land on like every mountain, every canyon, on Duna, uh, plant a flag and give it my own name. Like I have a hill on Duna that's called Marvin's Hill for me. I planted a flag there. But yeah, then, getting in and blasting off the surface, of course closing down uh, the ramp again and then let's blast off into space again and then let's get home. Uh, yeah, our Kerbal has been stuck in this one command port for way too long, um, but maybe, I mean, now that the rover is out, he would have probably have additional space in the cargo bay, but I heard you shouldn't do that. Um, but he can try it out, maybe. Uh, yeah, here you can see a beautiful, really, really beautiful um, shot coming up here. I mean, look at that. Like, KSP1 still looks so awesome to this day sometimes. I mean, this shot here could be out of a movie. Like, uh, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just too much, maybe. But I really think this, this could be out of the movie. Then, waiting for transfer window again, which of course I used the folded paper again to get. And then we can not head back because my electricity ran out. I only had the solar panels. You can see the sun isn't shining at the solar panels. So <laughs> what I did, I got the Kerbal out and pushed towards the, the nose of the craft so it would rotate. Got back in and as soon as the solar panels um, got light again from the sun. Uh, we could actually uh, do the burn. I had to do this twice. I only showed it once because like it's funny one time but not two times. Uh, when I approached Kerbin I had the same problem again and I really forgot or I planned, sorry guys, I planned uh, to add no batteries. Uh, of course anybody would plan it like that uh, and to only add some solar panels. So we really have to be careful when being on the dark side of a planet because the electricity will just run out 
which is also planned. Like, just make it a bit more interesting, of course. Everything is planned in this video. Nobody, like, I have never made a mistake in this game, guys. I mean, never ever. Okay, let's stop this uh, choking tangent. But yeah, then we can arrow break. And it was really tricky to get this arrow break right. Um, but I managed to do it first try. Like what I wanted is to get the air perhaps is not too low, um, but also not too high because I wanted to get into an orbit before I land, that I can land at the KSC. And how I did it, or how you can do it with a plane, um, is that you, uh, when re-entering, you can kind of control the amount of uh, braking you do with uh, your position relative to the surface. Like if you pitch up, you break more, if you just uh, point straight forward, you will break less. But here, can we make it first try? Spoiler, yes. And this here will be the smoothest landing I've ever done, I think. Even better than in the RML video, which uh, you should also check out, but this landing it was something else. So we came in, we came in so steep, even a Russian fighter jet pilot would be scared. I don't know, my dad always told me, he grew up in the Cold War, and he, he always tells me that, uh, or told me when I was a kid, uh, and watching some planes, when a plane came in steep, he told like, this is a Russian fighter jet pilot. But anyway, we have landed here, shoots are off, and with that the video is over. I hope you liked it. Goodbye guys, we see us in the next one.